Canadian Natural Resources Limited may be a company with all the right moves. Do they just have a really good PR team or are they the real deal? Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Canadian Natural Resources Limited, or CNQ, is one of the largest independent crude oil and natural gas producers in, well, the entire world. Founded in 1989 and based out of Calgary, Alberta, CNQ operates primarily in Western Canada, the United Kingdom sector of the North Sea, and offshore Africa. The company is known for its diverse and balanced portfolio of assets, and they also have a strong commitment to sustainability. CNQ operates a wide range of projects in the upstream, midstream, and even the downstream sectors. In the upstream sector, CNQ has a strong presence in oil sands mining, in acetyl bitumen production, heavy crude oil, light crude oil, and natural gas production. Some of their major projects include the Horizon Oil Sands, the Athabascan Oil Sands Project, and the Pelican Lake Heavy Crude Oil Project. In the midstream sector, CNQ operates pipelines and processing facilities, ensuring efficient transportation of their products to market. Their downstream operations focus on refining and marketing with a refining capacity of approximately 140,000 barrels per day, ensuring a pretty stable demand for their upstream production. CNQ is committed to responsible and sustainable operations. The company invests in innovative technologies and practices to minimize its environmental impact and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. CNQ is also dedicated to the well-being of the communities where they operate, supporting local initiatives and fostering long-term relationships with stakeholders. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you hold any C and Q. Your participation is well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and thank you for that click. In the past, CNQ has demonstrated consistent financial performance over the years despite fluctuations in the global energy market. The company's focus on cost efficiency and strategic investments has enabled them to maintain pretty healthy financials. Despite all of the higher expectations with CNQ, we just can't give them a pass without, of course, having some words with our good old buddy, Mr. Math. We will, of course, start with the surface data, and CNQ has a market cap of $86.89 billion, and they have a pretty volatile beta of 2.02. This makes them twice as volatile as the market average. Their earnings per share are nice, 9.52, and they have a price to earnings ratio of 8.30. Now, the average in that sector is 4.50, so they are a little bit up there. Their price to book ratio comes in at 2.30, meaning they're valued 2.3 times more than their book value. When we start to look a little bit at the cash, when it comes to their revenue, their revenue comes in at $42.298 billion and they have earnings of $10.937 billion. Now their earnings growth, they've grown their earnings by 32.8% over the last five years. That's really nice. However, we do have to point out their projected earnings are negative 9.7% over their next three years. This projection seems bad, but it may not be as bad as it seems and in some ways maybe a small correction on the explosion of that earnings growth that they had over the last five years. Now when it comes to cash on hand, so free cash flow, they do have $14.255 billion. Now one other concern that I do want to point out is that there has been a little bit of insider selling over the last three months. Since the 22nd of January, just over 280,000 shares were sold by employees of the company. This does not necessarily have to mean that there is trouble on the horizon as those 280,000 shares were sold by three people and with the increase in share price it might have just been taking a little bit of profit off the table. When we move on to their return on equity that comes in at 29.12 percent. Let's talk a tiny bit about their fair value. As per a discounted cash flow model their fair value should be at $110.23. This basically places them undervalued by 28 percent. All right let's switch over to returns. We'll start, of course, with the dividend. Their yield comes in at 4.534%. That is a quarterly dividend that is paid out quarterly in the amount of 90 cents per share. They do have a healthy payout ratio of 32.56, so that dividend is absolutely sustainable, and I have no concerns at all with it. Okay, let's take a look at their growth. We'll start with the three-year. They started at $19.13, and over three years, they grew to $78.84. That's a return on investment of three. 
312.13% add in all of their dividends and you get a total return of 357.47%. Holy banana bread, that is not too shabby. When we look at their one year, they came in at $79.64 and they went out at $78.84. Now that is a return on investment of negative 1%. That does, however, after we add in the dividends, still give them a total return of 4.02%. They absolutely overperformed the market. And keep in mind, we did have that big oil crash in that one year. So they've done really well. Now in 2023, so this year, they started this year off at $74.60. They've grown that to $78.84. That is a return on investment of 5.68%. Add in the dividend that they've received thus far, and we do get a total return of 6.89%. So growth-wise, there's really nothing to complain about. If you had invested in this company three years ago and are still holding them, holy banana bread, you have done well. Okay, let's switch things up to debt. Their total debt comes in at $11.445 billion, while their total equity comes in at $38.175 billion. That gives them a debt-to-equity ratio of 26.30%. I really love that this debt-to-equity ratio decreased from 71% down to that 26.30% over their last five years. This is a very healthy debt to equity pattern for sure. When we look at the short term, they have assets of 7.06 billion and liabilities of 8.65 billion. So those liabilities are a little bit bigger than their assets. I never like to see that, but let's look at their long term and see what we got going on there. In the long term, their assets are 69.09 billion to 29.32 billion in liabilities. That looks a lot better. Overall, their debt is not too bad. The highlights are that it is well covered by their operating cash flow, and there is no issue at all in regard to the interest on that debt. Yes, I would like to see an improvement in their short-term asset liability balance, but it's really not a deciding factor at all right now, as this is still a very good debt picture. So what is the final verdict on CNQ? The energy sector is currently undergoing a significant transformation with a global push towards renewable energy and decarbonization. However, oil and gas are expected to remain essential components of the global energy mix, well, at least for the foreseeable future. CNQ is well positioned to navigate the changing landscape thanks to its diversified asset base, focus on cost efficiency, and commitment to sustainability. Moreover, the company's ongoing investments in innovation, technology, and new projects provide promising growth opportunities in the coming years. Fundamentally, their numbers are good for the most part. I love their debt a lot, and it really has created a good size buffer for CNQ to utilize more of it if things ever get it get a little bit more on the struggling side for them. When we look at their growth, it is undeniable that investing in them three years ago would have been a no-brainer. However, past performance does not guarantee future performance. With that being said, I still think they're going to be looking at some growth as oil rebounds for the remainder of this year. They have a solid diversification in the sector and an eye on the changing environment, and this will serve them well on the long term. With their dividend and growth potential, they have what they need to be a half-decent total return stock moving forward into the future. I would say that this is a good company for both, well, for all three, for short, mid, and long-term investment. Still, do your own due diligence, but C&Q looks pretty good in my books. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on synthetic covered calls that I linked on the left, or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner. See you in the next video.